What's up guys, it's um, Kane over at Broski Gamers, AKA the Bee Gees. <sighs> Not the ones you're thinking of, but um, here with the spicy, spicy little build for you. Um, I played uh, two tournaments of this. Uh, two tournaments with two different variants. Yeah, two different variants. Um, because if you are unaware, this card right here, <laughs> variants out the ass. Like so many uh, different ways that you can play, but this is the one I've been playing uh, most recently. Uh, it's pretty fun. Pretty you, gonna... went, you went XO, you went XO with this build, and then you went yes. X1 with the Eldritch Horde build. Yeah. So I guess total records like eight eight and zero nine and zero yeah it's it's pretty fun um fun uh truthfully the the only thing i would say about this is that you really have to make sure that your timing is on point it's kind of hard to well i don't think it's that hard it just takes some practice to like remember when everything should be mm -hmm. happening um you also have to plan out in, uh, in advance because uh there are going to be a lot of times where people try to disrupt your play uh, you just have to know which cards to place when. Um, uh, we've never really had a legitimate Eldritch profile on the channel, I don't think. And yeah, so this, now we're about to put out like three of them. Yeah, this is like the first time I'll ever be like actually actively saying what he does, um, like in in on camera at least. So yeah. of course, triple Eldritch. I probably don't necessarily have to explain what he does, but you can get rid of this and one spell or trap from your hand send one card on the field to the graveyard um a lot of people uh are like oh it's really great for like you know um for for monsters but i actually use it probably more for back row um monsters aren't really that big of a deal especially not to this deck uh but you know back row disruption that can really kind of throw you off um anything that might um, I'll get into what stands in your way a little bit later on down the line, but it's really nice to just have the extra support of like getting rid of any card in the field as opposed to like monster, spell trap, just any kind of out that you need. Uh, next up, double inspector border. Let's just stop some effects from popping off. Was which stun Eldritch? Which truthfully, I played. I've played inspector border probably like three times. In the total number of times that I've played through, and he's definitely help. He definitely helps. Um, he's not 100% necessary, but the rest of the way this deck is built, it doesn't matter that you can't really use effects like that. Um, Dynamite Knight, the True Drake, a fighter. Oh, oh it's getting zesty. We're talking sexy out here. Now remember, um, this was the profile that went 4-0, so XO, and. Um, yeah, this this is all just like add true Draco card, right? Like pretty much yeah, every true add, Draco add, is just like add a true Draco. Yeah, the, the Knuckles of course adds a trap. Yeah, and then we've got and Ignis Heat. You know, Ignis adds a spell. A spell. Um, and for monsters, that's actually it. <gasps> it is actually it, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Next up, uh, Eld Elixir of Black Awakening, followed by my personal favorite, Eld Elixir of White Destiny. Uh, I tend to find Eld Elixir of White Destiny has been like the most clutch one to have. Um, just getting rid of like your... Um, Unbreaks your hand. Yeah, getting rid of, of um, Eld Elixir and being able to use it for its secondary effect as well as having the like hand or graveyard. Because there have been plenty of times where we played and I'm like, oh shit, I don't even have a target anymore. Um, because I can shotgun them out pretty quick. Next up, Cursed Eldaland. This is part of the reason why sometimes I can shotgun them out really quick because I'll put them in my hand to like send something from the field. Um, next up, probably like the the wildest card in the in the whole deck is the addition of Card of Demise. Mm -hmm. The amount of times that I've like used Card of Demise like on some anime type shit, like I draw until I have three cards and then just like mm -hmm. in this deck three cards is more than enough to turn the whole thing around. Although truthfully, most of the time you're in control. This is a more control style of deck than like I think I've ever played. Um, like can OTK for sure. Yeah, it can, but like you don't even have to because you're having too much fun. Yeah. Next up, Dragonic Diagram. Not a lot to say here. Pop one. 
like get rid of one, pop one from the field. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Uh, Disciples uh, lets you shuffle three True Draco, True King cards from Graveyard, which comes in really handy. Um, we're actually running two of those. We're gonna be running two Heritage, which will allow you to draw equal to the number of um, card types that are True Draco, True King mm -hmm. that were destroyed that turn. Uh, additionally, if it's sent, you can um, get rid of a spell or trap on the field. Pretty good, uh, pretty good for removal, but here's where the real like bulk of the the deck comes in. So with the traps, going triple Scarlet Sanguine. You already knew that, but you still choose to live a life that you dread. And so next up, triple <sighs> Conquistador. Now uh, I will say, I'm not gonna go over what Sanguine does. It's just a special summon. Um, but at the end of all of these cards, I'll tell you what their secondary effect does and how it should be used. Um, next up, Double Hakero. The Golden Land um, Conquistador and Hakero move is pretty classic. Uh, addition of Golden Land Forever, in which oftentimes I'll use one of these as tribute. Uh, skill Drain, Double Apocalypse. This card's crazy in this deck. Oh yeah. Because they literally don't care. Oh yeah. Which, this right here, um, it's got a lot of text, so I'm not going to read it to you, but... We've got plenty of True Draco <laughs> like profiles on the channel. If you haven't watched them already, yeah. go check them out. Yeah. Um, but basically all you need to know about the Apocalypse is just pop some monsters. So. Yeah. And so next up, there's Torrential Tribute. I don't know, like if you don't know what Torrential Tribute is, I guess you're new to the game. Pretty I guess you haven't been playing in a while. Uh, pretty busted. Pretty wicked. Pretty wicked. I actually, this format, actually. actually, I was too timid back in like 05 to play something like this. Yeah. Because I was like, well, what? what that backfires like what if i like the only time you can play it is if you have a monster born in your hand mm -hmm. or as it was affectionately called in the first couple the first like 35 episodes of uh Yu-Gi-Oh reborn the monster mm -hmm. next up double trap trick need i say more look yeah. at all these traps we're running need i say more gives you five um sanguine triple solemn strike i know what you're thinking why'd you go with strike instead of Triple judgment. Damn. So you just aren't letting people play the game. No. No. I don't want you to play. Because I want you to see like the way that you lost, and I want you to understand very plainly that like you had no way of coming back. So <sighs> of course all of the Golden Land and Eld Elixir cards all interact with each other in a specific way. So Golden Lands bring Eld Elixirs and place them. This is all an in phase, so you can activate them pretty much immediately afterwards. Um, and all of the Eld Elixirs get Golden Lands. So your targets are, of course, you know, your Hakero, your um, Conquistador, as well as your Forever for Sanguine. And for these two right here, your targets are Sanguine, White Destiny, and Black Awakening. Um, again, I'd say if you have multiple copies, if you have like, you know, two... Uh, golden land cards going and their effects are both going to activate maybe plan out using like two sanguines um, but if you have like a sanguine and a white destiny whose effect are about to activate sure put like a conquistador on the field but keep in mind that that golden land forever can be used with um or by tributing one of those uh golden land traps mm -hmm. because ultimately it just says a zombie monster once it's special summoned it becomes a zombie monster just use that because truthfully, I don't like getting rid of my Golden Lord. His effect, his secondary effect to special summon himself out is like amazing, but most of the time I don't really need it. And I know what you're thinking, damn, you just got these spare card sleeves over yeah, here in the corner. So I guess I'll give a little bit of explanation on the extra deck or lack thereof. Um, so basically we put this deck together. Um, well, I put it together and um, I had King go with it. And then he was like, hey, there's literally nothing in the extra deck. And I was like, hmm, well, it is true Draco. They don't normally play with one. So basically all we did was like pull a couple cards out of the binder. Um, we just pulled out a um, Juggernaut Leave, um, Gustav Max, and a Durandal. Um, just because these are pretty much the only ones he was going to go into. Yeah. Because um, the thing about Elich, it, it kind of inherently outs every threat in the current format. And these are just, I mean, this... You know, the old school Eld Blitch OTK play. Yeah. Um, Durandal is just Durandal. It's pretty good also. Yeah, which Durandal I've actually found myself going into more frequently than anything. Um, these right here are nice additions. 
if you want to just like if you if you have to do it i mean there is um there are plenty of points in time where it comes in handy it's not 100 percent necessary but durandal um the very few times that you can kind of get a little bit bricky if you can special out durandal you can just reshuffle your whole hand yeah. your opponent has to do the same i mean it's pretty inconvenient for let me put it like this way. Uh, let me put it like this. If it's convenient for you, it's probably inconvenient for them. Yeah, and there are other, like, techs you can kind of do. Like, you can, um, there's a card card, like, Vulcas Vulcasaurus. Um, you can, he's two level five, so you can overlay, pop a card, like, then go into Gaia Charger Battle, then overlay for Zeus. And then you have, like, a three format Zeus. Yeah. Um, so you could also do that, but, like... Which, I think the great thing about how open the extra deck is here is that it really allows you to cater to your play style. So, um, a lot of times, for me... You could even run an Extravagance in this, honestly. Yeah. Or you could cut these three and put in Monarch's Rupt. Yeah. I think when it comes to me, personally, um... I get really invested in like the game and then suddenly at at the in the late game I'm like oh, I wish this was over already and then like oh yeah Greg Gustav Max like it can be over right yeah, now yeah. Um, and if it couldn't necessarily be over with that <laughs> yeah. so like it yeah, will Gustav be over. Max is pretty crazy in time but yeah and so I mean these three right here it allows you to play more to what you know about yourself um, we can't necessarily tell you who you are if you don't know that that's something to take up with your therapist. Um, I don't know if you're like, you know, struggling right now. We'll listen to you if we have to, but just be prepared to run a duel like before or after. Yeah. Also, um, like always with this video, like the video if you like the video, uh, leave a comment if you want to see all of the different iterations the game's been playing. Uh, they're probably going to come anyways, but um, he's got a lot of spicy builds for the Eldritch deck um, in general. Probably ones that you haven't really seen like that, but go ahead and comment for that. Like the video. Uh, go ahead and hit that sub button. Y'all been killing it lately, honestly. Um, you know, super grateful for that. And um, anything that you got left to say? You know you're wrong, shit you out of pocket. Remember you was couch surfing? You ain't have a casa. In mi casa, I would buy you shoes.